Hi everyone! I'm trying out a different format where I chat with you on different topics over some chill studio footage. If you want to mute me and use this as a background while you listen to your own music, that's totally fine. I've heard that watching ceramics is actually quite soothing. So today I'm going to talk about my art school journey, which was long, windy, but I have no regrets. So I graduated high school in 2008, which as you may know, was the start of the first uh, modern recession, the first recession of my lifetime, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like any other millennial, I was told, go to college, that's the key to a good job. It was ingrained in our society. And that's what I did. I always had great remarks in school. I was on the honors track. I took some AP classes, et cetera, et cetera. So there was already an immense amount of pressure, not only just to go to college, but to go to college and be super successful at it. I started at Western Connecticut State University as a graphic design major. And I'll be honest, I didn't transition well into the college life. Uh, I don't think it had so much to do with being away from family as much as it had to do with um, f navigating the academic stuff. <laughs> and I think I just cracked. So the following semester, I went to community college, um, Gateway Community College in New Haven, which honestly was a much better fit for me. There was no pressure financially or academically and it gave me the space and the time to really figure out what I wanted to do while still working towards a degree. Um, I still had high quality professors, especially since Yale is a next door neighbor, and most of my professors were teaching the exact same curriculum, and I got to benefit from that at a fraction of the cost with much more diversity in the student body, my fellow classmates. So I got most of my gen eds out of the way and took at least one studio class a semester to try stuff out and figure out what do I want to major in. <laughs> this is where I figured out that uh, graphic design is probably not it and that I really want to do something three dimensional. In 2011, I transferred to Southern Connecticut State University, and that's where I took my first pottery class, which was hand building. At the time, though, when I transferred, I thought, maybe I'll be a double major in art education and jewelry. I couldn't commit to a non-practical art major. Like, I definitely wanted art in my life, but to just be a studio art major... Uh, that was just too scary, <laughs> too scary, um, especially with no footsteps to follow and we're still in a, the middle of a recession. But that following semester, I took my first jewelry class and a few art ed classes and realized this medium ain't it, art teacher, definitely not it. I do not want to be a teacher. <laughs> so um, that's where I started to focus a bit more on ceramics. And so while I was trying to figure out how to fit art into my life, um, I was also exploring things like journalism, media studies, and even for a brief moment, I thought maybe nursing, question mark, since I was working as a pharmacy tech and the medical field is always hiring, right? job security, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I was in the radio station on campus and I ended up getting a job through there. So I thought maybe that's something I could do. Um, media studies, I've always been interested in pop culture. So I thought maybe that's something I can work with. But the more classes I took in ceramics, the more I realized that this is definitely what I want to do. This is the medium that I want to focus on. And I don't think I want to do anything else. If that meant that I would stay as a pharmacy tech part-time forever, I was okay with that because pharmacy technicians can work in hospitals and get flexible hours and make a somewhat decent earning.
The way the program worked was that you still had to take a class in four out of the six mediums, which I think helps make a well-rounded artist. Learning 3D values informs your 2D work and vice versa. Skills and techniques learned in one medium might be applicable to another. For example, in my printmaking class, I learned a lot about screen printing and block printing, which can help with surface design and making my own custom stamps, especially with block prints like the linoleum that you can carve. By my last couple of semesters of undergrad, I've made a body of work that was centered around animals in precarious situations that was basically a commentary on society. They were meant to be humorous, uh, a little bit relatable, while still questioning a serious issue. My thesis show is still something I'm super proud of. After graduation, I was toying with the idea of grad school because being an art major, that's your quote unquote next step, right? Um, so I applied to a few programs, even though I wasn't fully convinced that it was the right move. I focused on applying to programs that included a stipend and would waive your tuition if you worked there. So if I was going to do grad school, I wanted to make sure that it was as low cost as possible. Uh, still being hesitant about grad school, I ended up just taking a post back program at UMass Dartmouth. So a post back is a sort of an in-between degree that allows you to take grad school credits and utilize the space of a university in a more professional manner uh, without the same commitment <laughs> as a grad school program. So with this program, I got 12 grad school credits, which was basically two classes a semester. And the rest of the time I was free to be in the studio. And this was the first year of my life that I was unemployed and had all the time in the world just to focus on what I wanted. I've held a job, at least one, since I was 16. So this was a huge leap for me to be able to focus on one thing and one thing only. At the time, I was still at the pharmacy being, you know, pharmacy tech, and I was working as a university assistant for the ceramics department at Southern Connecticut State University. And I was doing things like filling the kiln, unloading the kiln, um, mixing the clay, maintaining the pug mills, and helping out students in you know, the professor's off hours and, you know, maintaining the studio space, answering questions, stuff like that. So I quit those jobs and this was a huge year <laughs> because not only was I able to switch my focus from sculptural work to functional work and hone in on my pottery skills, I was also able to learn so much about the technical side of ceramics because there is a plethora of things to learn about clay. I learned how to mix my own clay and glazes from scratch. I learned how to build kilns. Uh, that was one of the classes that I took was kiln building, so I know a ton about bricks. <laughs> I learned how to fire a bunch of different types of kilns and different firings like wood firing, gas, raku. I learned all about that and a bit about the science behind all of it, which I think is super fascinating. Fun fact, my mom's a chemist. And when I was little, I wanted to be a science teacher. So this worked out super great. <laughs> I also realized by the end of the program that I've had enough school and grad school wasn't for me. <laughs> I'll close this out with two questions that I get pretty often. The first one being, should I go to art school? I would say if it's accessible to you, then maybe. Professors make or break the experience, and there's no comparison to getting in-person help and critiques from the right people to help you grow as an artist. That doesn't mean you need to be a major, nor is it the only way to become an artist or get feedback on your work. But that does mean you should definitely look into what type of program you're applying to, look into 
what the professors are like. Try and see if there's any type of reviews on the professors that you're going to be learning from because they will make or break your art school experience. Art school is like a fast track into gaining the confidence and the tools that you need to do art. It should pack your toolbox with an arsenal of handy tricks. Many art schools, however, don't prepare you for business. So if you are going to go to school for art and specifically college, um, take an entrepreneur class or two. Not just business, entrepreneurship. That's what you want to look for. The next question I get is, should I go to grad school? And also, this one is depends on what you want. If you are 100% sure that you want to be a professor, then yes, go get that MFA. You need it. If you want critique, communal experience, and access to equipment you don't currently have, there's also residencies that are probably worth looking into. Both MFA programs and residencies have the potential to be free or even paid, as in you get a stipend and the tuition or cost is waived for attending. So I'd really only look into those types of programs. They're few and far between and really competitive, but I don't know if I fully believe that an MFA is worth a high price tag unless if you really need that degree to get a specific job like becoming a professor. Again, an MFA program is also highly dependent on the professors who run it. So more so than undergrad, definitely for grad school, look into who you will be learning from because they will, again, make or break your experience. So I hope this was insightful and helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you made it this far, leave a pencil emoji and a medium you'd like to try. Now that I think about it, I think my only regret about art school is that my school didn't have a fibers program. I mean, at the time, I didn't even know it was a thing, but I think if fibers was an option, I might be doing that instead of pottery. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll let the time lapse play for a little bit. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye.